So are we supposed to start the podcast? Ready? One, two, three. Welcome to IHIP News. We are going to do a wrap up of the news that is important to Pumps and me. I've had it podcast news. Pumps full-time hobby is monitoring um, Trump, Trump indictments. <laughs> when we went to Atlanta to do a live show, um, she wanted to go sightseeing. And the first place she wanted to go was the Fulton County Courthouse. We did a lap around the outside of it. It was just a few days before he was indicted there. And I can't even begin to tell you how much joy it brought her to be there. We have a photograph of us there. Yes. So, Pumps, I'm going to turn it over to you. Why don't you tell us what on earth is going on with this madman? You know, there are just so many things. Condensing it is a problem. So I thought I would just hit my my personal favorites. Great. So my personal favorites right now are that Donald Trump is appealing his D.C. circuit or his D.C. judge ruling that he does not have absolute presidential immunity. So in the appeal, his lawyer actually argued in front of three judges, federal appointees, that the president has absolute immunity to commit criminal acts unless he is impeached first. So absolute criminal immunity for any behavior unless he's impeached and convicted by the Senate, which is not in any constitutional, any statute. That's just complete and utter bullshit. Okay. The, one of the judges said, well, does that mean if he ordered SEAL Team 6 to take out a political rival, he would not be held accountable? And basically the answer was no, not unless he was impeached and convicted. So he could assassinate his rival, assassinate his rival, resign from office and go off into the wild. Happy as a clam, zero consequences. Then in the New York criminal fraud case, which Everybody needs to be reminded he's already been found to be fraudulent. His company's fraud. Now it's just we're in the damages phase. He stands up in court, gives gives the old, I, it's a witch hunt, it's political interference, all of those good stuff, and storms out of the courtroom in a huff, which I just can't even tell you how that does not happen. People are not allowed to behave that way. His inability to control himself never ceases. You know, what I think so frustrating is you're an attorney. My husband's an attorney. And I know when you all go to court and the cases are nothing compared to what this is. Right. How serious you take it, how you prep your clients for it, how respectable you're supposed to be to the judges. It's just how much this person continues to get away with. And it just unbelievable. seems to me that if this were a person of color or a woman, that they would have been, had bigger consequences by now than this man has had. Absolutely. And he gets up in every raw, raw rally thing that he has, which is all the time his little press availability. He talks about how unfair it is. And I'm like, you wouldn't know fair if it bit you on the ass. Yeah. Then my third favorite thing is he's already been found liable for sexual assault. And now we're having a second defamation over on that case with the same plaintiff because he he was ordered to pay $5 million, found liable, and immediately went on TV and said he didn't do it. And she was an evil, horrible person. So now he tries that again, which liability has already been determined. We're just citing damages. Right. So my three biggest takeaways from all that are the lack of accountability, how this man runs around. He's a walking crime spree. He is a walking, disrespectful, inhuman psychopath. And he walks around with zero consequences, no accountability. He he just gets away with everything. It I find it fascinating. So one person being crazy in a vacuum, I get. You see this all the time, a lone crazy person. Where this becomes so dangerous is he has tens of millions yes. of people who intend to vote for him. It is that's the part that is so disturbing about him. Like one crazy person, you could be in any downtown urban area and there's a crazy person ranting similarly to sure. Donald Trump all the time. 
Trump has all of these followers, cult followers that think that he is like, you know, they put him on equal footing. It's like our Lord and personal savior and Trump. I mean, they are right there together. And then the whole, I I just, I just want to circle back on this, how his followers make the homoerotic Photoshop (laughs) artwork of him topless right with all these muscles with an ar-15 that's just one of my personal favorite delusions of grandeur in which this cult traffics in well and he looks like a caricature in real life but in these but in these videos he has this amazing body great hair (laughs) he's not orange it's just unbelievable it's kind of homoerotic it is i mean and it's just and now his new thing is anything that he says that is not in his favor. He runs around saying, oh, now it's AI. AI did it. I didn't do it. AI did it. I mean, just the lack of accountability is just jaw dropping. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, let me tell you my favorite news of the week. Um, you know, I love the uh, face plant of the Moms for Liberty. It's so entertaining. Which started with Bridget Ziegler right. and her lesbian activity. Right. Now there's a new one. And her name is Carrie Blair of Tennessee. Um, and she has been charged with shoplifting <laughs> $730 worth of merchandise from Target, <laughs> which is interesting on two fronts. <laughs> Number one, I thought Target was too woke for people that are members of the Moms for Liberty to shop. Right. Why was she there? They run a rampage about Target. Right. right? Okay. Secondly, um, when you're grandstanding around about the Bible and teaching biblical principles, you know, I'm not a religious person and wasn't raised about religion, but I've heard about a few things. And I believe that stealing is in the Ten Commandments, is it not? I think so. I can't really say. Thou shalt mean, not steal. Somewhere that sounds, in the Bible. It's right. got to say you can't steal somewhere. Right. And so... I just think it's interesting. I saw a tweet on Twitter where somebody said, obviously, Carrie Blair was shoplifting lingerie for Bridget's menage a trois. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. That's great. (laughs) But I think it's interesting to point out that these people are doing the same thing that Trump does, and they're being somewhat held accountable. Right. Right. They're women. And, you know, you see outrage a little bit on both sides. But when it comes to Trump, there is that accountability void. And that's just I don't know if it's it is inherent sexism. Um, But the way that that man gets away with stuff, I mean, because he was wasn't he um, wasn't he bragging about profiting in the uh, White House? Yes. So that that's another thing this week or he admitted that he took money from different China, China, other countries too, said, oh, it was only $7 million. That's nothing. And then (laughs) said, I was providing services for them as president of the United States. I remember when people were disqualified when they had from running for president, when they had an affair or couldn't spell potato. Right. And now we have somebody that is a walking crime spree, 91 criminal felony counts in four jurisdictions, sexual liable for sexual abuse hush money to a porn star and everybody's just like oh well he's a victim he's a victim of his own bad behavior it's almost like he's been so saturated in the news so much and we're all of our senses are so dulled to it now that the the outrage that we had from the moment that he came down the escalator um, at Trump Tower to now, it's kind of like we, we're getting desensitized to school shootings. Right. We'll get an alert on our phone now, and it's like, oh, God, that's bad. But the first few ones that you heard about, it's it sat with you. You thought about it. Now we see them, and it's like, oh, okay, and then what's going on on Instagram? And right. It's kind of that same effect with Trump, and it's really dangerous how desensitized we're all getting to these uh, to this stuff. But I'm not desensitized to the Moms for Liberty hypocrisy. Um, Just a little note to our viewers. You can go to the website Moms for Liberties, L-I-B-E-R-T-I-E-S. It is a satire site (laughs) that is tap the vein. So good. Um, Okay. My next favorite story 
is uh, Mike Jesus Christ Johnson. Right. Moses. Yeah. Moses. Moses Johnson, the Speaker of the House, (laughs) had a little uh, closed door session with his colleagues. And he claimed to all of them that he's getting cyber bullied by them. And so in a closed door meeting, he pitched a fit and demanded that his GOP colleagues stop criticizing him on social media. And then Jim Jordan, as we all know, is spelled (laughs) G-Y-M. Always. Jim Jordan chewed out Johnson during the meeting. And then Johnson, and the reason why they were so mad at him, because Johnson, albeit he's a total nut, was trying to work to avert a government shutdown. Right, as he should. And the lunatic wing of the party just won't have it. They're like Donald Trump. It's just temper tantrum, throw feces. And so this level of Republican cannibalism um, is something that I hate to admit because it's bad, but I really quite enjoy it. I do too. I have, I have to admit The it's Republican a- cannibalism is out of control. It's unbelievable. Even uh-huh. Senator Brewster Box can't, was trying to take down Matt Gates. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly, um, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up Governor Kittenheels. Kittenheels. One of my favorite things of this political cycle has been the rise of Kittenheels and to hear all of these people that we know in our red state immediately jump, jump off the Trump train after two I mean, after four years of a complete shit show of a presidency. And then they voted for him twice. And then they act like, oh, we're done with Trump. That all of a sudden they have moral clarity. Right. <laughs> that suddenly, and it's only when he lost, that Absolutely. all of a sudden they have moral clarity. And it's DeSantis. Governor Kittenhills, he's our savior, and they're all on the Kittenhill train, right? And then he just starts face planning and face planning <laughs> and face planning and face planning. So now it's, you know, pretty much, I think within the next few days, he's probably going to uh, withdraw from the presidential campaign. There are rumors that he's going to withdraw soon. And so that face plant is so delicious to me. But recently he was in Tallahassee and he gave the state of the state speech. And in the speech, I found a particular interest that he said, Florida is a refuge for freedom and sanity. (laughs) And he droned on about protecting children from woke ideology. But, Pumps, he failed to mention in his state of the state speech something I think is of rather importance. If you're a pro-life politician, if you're a Jesus Christ politician, politician, if you're a Bible guy and a family guy, right? He fails to mention that 750,000 Floridians have been dropped from the Medicaid rolls. Of these 750,000, 300,000 of those are children. Kitten Hills offers no solution for these children, and he made a ludicrous claim that it is, quote, tax-free to raise a child in Florida. When the facts are contrary to that, the facts are this, Florida's tax burden falls disproportionately on the shoulders of the lowest income families. So here's what you have with the Republican Party, with the Bridget Ziegler's, with this shoplifter Carrie Blair, with Trump, with Mike Moses, Jesus Christ Johnson, and with Governor Kittenhills. I could go on and on and list them right. all in there. Is they... Their politics now is just gaslighting. Right. Florida is the place of sanity. Well, no, it's not. You're yeah. banning books. You're banning abortion. Um, Health care. Almost a million citizens have been dropped from Medicaid rolls, and you don't give a shit about it. Right. Um, you know, I think uh, Donald Trump, with all of the crap he's up to with He's already setting the soil that elections are rigged. Right. And you see this, you know, down the ballot and other um, disenfranchising people. Yes. Yes. Against our system of justice, against our system of elections. He is just he's a fascist. And I just Kitten Hill still has not addressed Bridget Ziegler's situation on his um, Disney oversight board. And no. I just, I want that addressed by Kitten Hills. I want it addressed that he has uh, somebody on his oversight board that's supposed to monitor Disney to make sure they don't do gay stuff. Right. And somebody on his board is doing gay stuff. And we'll note it for the permanent record. 
We support gay stuff. A hundred percent. What I don't support is people advocating to pass punitive laws and unequal laws towards the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and then behind closed doors, they're scissoring with the other Moms for Liberty people. <laughs> the Bad hypocrisy. It. If that's not their campaign slogan, I don't know what is. It is just a melting pot of hypocrisy. Yeah. All right. Well, that's been our little lightning round of news that is important to us. And uh, subscribe to our channel. We have a podcast on Tuesdays and Thursdays called I've Had a Podcast. This YouTube channel, a Patreon channel. We have a star. <laughs> Pops. <laughs> and we'll see you when we feel like it. Yeah.